This is the chart of nuclides. Now the chart of nuclides is very similar to the periodic table of the elements. The periodic table of the elements is a systematic for the electron shells of the elements. Now the chart of nuclides is a systematic for the core of the elements. That's why it's called chart of nuclides, because it only addresses the systematics of the core of the nucleus of the elements. Otherwise, um, we would call it element or an isotope. When we call it element or isotope, we include the electron shell. If we talk about nucleus or nuclide, we only address the, the core of the element. And this here is the entire chart of nuclides. And I'm now zooming into this chart of nuclides. It's a web page, so we can see how this systematic works and what information is included in this chart of nuclides that are useful for um, cosmochemistry. So I'm zooming in here. So this should be okay, I think, or maybe one little less. Now the chart of nuclides has two axes, and the nucleus has two constituents, which are protons and neutrons, and these define the axis. On the x-axis here are the number of neutrons in a nuclide, and on the y-axis is the number of protons in a nuclide. And because the elements are defined by a specific number of protons in the nucleus, in the core, this means that the chemical elements are plotted along the y-axis here. And because the neutrons are on the x-axis and isotopes are defined by um, the number of neutrons in the core, the isotopes are plotted along the x-axis. So this is the systematics of the chart of nuclides. So if we have a look here, for example, at, say, gadolinium here, then all these isotopes, so this is, this is the element, above is the next element, so along the x-axis, all these isotopes are gadolinium. So all these isotopes belong to gadolinium. So there are numerous isotopes that belong to each element. There's not one element, there are many isotopes for one, or well, isotopes for one element. Isotope meaning including electron, here we're looking just nuclides. Now what we see here are a number of different colors. So, not going into detail, um, so there are green colors, for example, and the uh, well, bluish color and black. Black means these are stable isotopes. All others are radioactive, most of them with very short half-lives of maybe seconds to milliseconds. Now, these, these green isotopes, they decay into this direction to the stable isotopes, and the bluish isotopes decay in this direction towards the, the, the black stable isotopes, which means it's essentially like in a valley where isotopes on one side run down into the valley to form the stable isotopes and isotopes on the other side run down to form the stable isotopes. And this is why it's where the stable isotopes are very often called a valley of stability, which if I zoom out again can be, can be quite nicely seen. So this is the, the black outer valley of stability here in the middle. So this is the general structure of the um, chart of nuclides. So what kind of information is contained in the chart of nuclides? I'm zooming in here a little more and then there, there are lots of information and it's not very good to see here. It doesn't matter. So it's just for illustration. So for example here for this um, or for this neodymium, um, this, there's half life and this is of course stable this neodymium here. And for example, the next neodymium here has a half life of 2.49 hours, the next one 3.37 days, and so on. So one information, uh, important bit of information we can get from a chart of nuclide is for example for chronology, when we want to look at what kind of isotope systems might be good for um, chronology for dating. But also if you are interested in stable isotopes, it is very helpful because you might be interested in the number of stable isotopes of, say, a neodymium. So this here is neodymium. And then we can go to the right and count that neodymium has one, two, three, four, and that's it. So neodymium has four stable isotopes. So these are the information you can get from um, the chart of nuclides. And of course, when we then go into more detail, which I'm not going to do here, then there are additional information, for example, that all the heavy isotopes up there, um, they are 
none of them are stable. So this is also something like going into direction uranium, plutonium, um, thorium, and so on. There's, there's just very few or none stable isotopes up there. So this is also something we can see there. The yellow is a different kind of decay. Doesn't really matter. So this is a chart of nuclides, a systematics for the nucleus for the core of the elements and a bunch of information contained in chart nuclides that we can um, quickly extract there for various applications in cosmochemistry.